Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Uh, this is the first of hopefully a bunch of consecutive videos talking about Ableton Basics. So let's dive into it. So right at the top of Ableton, you should have these five options here. On Windows, if you go into Options, at the very, very bottom of Options, there's gonna be a Preference pane. On the Mac, it's different under Live and go into Settings. That's where you get the window through the file navigation menu. But the quick key on Mac is going to be command comma or on a PC, it should be control comma. And then it should pop up this window right here, which is your preference pane. So I'm only going to go through a couple things here uh, really quickly. And uh, the first thing that you're going to want to be looking at is your audio inputs and outputs. So I'm using an external sound card. I've got that set to Motu Track 16. But if you're running on a laptop, then you want that to be set to like your MacBook Pro speakers or, uh, you know, it might say laptop speakers or something like that. For the input device, you can choose any of the inputs. Again, if you have an external sound card, you can select the sound card and then you can actually select which of the sound card inputs that you want to be using. So if you're recording a guitar or a microphone, you can select the dedicated input channels um, on the tracks themselves. In terms of sample rate, uh, if you're using an external sound card, that sound card might be able to go all the way up to 192 kilohertz, which is like super pro audio that's going to be double DVD audio quality. Um, back in the days of CDs, 44.1 was the value. So if we go to the drop down 44.1 there, that's basic CD audio quality. I'm using 48K right now. That's perfect for instructional purposes. Now the buffer size is has everything to do with how quickly the computer interprets the audio and then plays it back for you. So when you're doing your recording, you want to have this as the lowest value possible. And then as you start layering on mixing plugins like EQ, compressor, bunch of instruments and stuff like that, your computer is going to slow down because it's taking that much more thought process to um, increase the value uh, and send the audio back out to you. I'm gonna leave mine at 512, which is fine. And uh, that's everything that we need to kind of look at here. In terms of look and feel, if you just click on the left-hand side, you can change the way that Ableton looks. I like the mid-dark theme, but you can change it just by selecting various options here. Uh, make sure that your plugins are enabled. So if you're using third-party plugins like Waves plugins or even pirated plugins, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of these buttons are turned on, at least for the audio units if you're using a Mac. If you're using a PC, then you're only gonna be using VST plugins, so that's gonna be VST2 or VST3, so make sure that those ones are turned on. And then the last setting that you wanna look for here and change is the record warp launch settings. So you go in here and you're going to change your file type, make sure your file type is set to wave because if you leave it on AIF using a Mac, uh, you're going to have to convert it if you're sending the session to somebody else using a PC. And uh, if you guys like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the channel grow and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.